Today I'm going to build an organization cabinet for my screws. I'll have a drawing and cut list on my website if you want to build this project and you can find them at the link in the description below. The nice thing about this project is it's not going to take a lot of material and there's a good chance that you already have the material you need in your shop. For the sides I'm using 3 quarter inch birch plywood and I'll get started by ripping the sides at 4 and 3 16 of an inch. Support for this episode is provided by PowerPro, engineered performance. The next step is to cut a notch or a rabbit in the back of the sides to accept the back of the cabinet. I've set the height of the blade at a half of an inch and set the fence at a sixteenth of an inch and I'll make one pass with each side. I've lowered the blade to a quarter of an inch and adjusted the fence to a quarter of an inch to complete the rabbet. After putting a straight edge on one side of each board, I'll set up a stop block and cut both sides to length. Okay, so now that I've got the sides of the cabinet cut to size, I'll go ahead and make the shelves. For the shelves, I'm using half inch plywood. And this is one of the old doors to the cabinet that used to go around the fan that was on the back wall. So I always save pieces of plywood like that, especially this is a pretty good size piece of plywood. And it happens to be Baltic birch, which is a little bit nicer. It's a little bit stronger than most of the plywood that you're gonna find at your home store. So I've set my fence at four inches and I'll go ahead and make the rip. I've cut a square end on both sides of each piece. Set the stop block at 25 and a half and now I can make my cross cuts. I've cut a piece of the half inch plywood that I'm using for the shelves at five inches and I'll use that as a measuring guide for attaching the shelves. After marking one of the sides, I'll use a square and transfer the lines to the other side. Next I'll measure in one inch and make a mark to drill a pilot hole using the drill press from what will be the inside of the cabinet. Drilling through the pilot holes, I'll countersink each hole on the outside of the cabinet. I'll use the pin nailer to tack the shelves in position. Then I'll pre-drill into the shelves and connect them with inch and a quarter screws. After attaching the shelves to one side of the cabinet, I'll spin it around and attach the shelves to the other side. Okay, so now the cabinet is really starting to take shape. I do still need to cut the back and when I attach the back, that is going to add some more strength to these shelves. Although I think they're really pretty strong as is, definitely strong enough for these screws, especially since we're sort of spacing out the weight. The next step is to band the edge of the plywood and that's gonna make the cabinet look a little bit nicer. For that, I'm using white oak and I'm using white oak simply because I have some leftover from another project. I'll rip the molding for the sides of the cabinet at a quarter of an inch by three quarters of an inch. Cutting halfway through the molding and then flipping it over like this is one way to avoid getting your hands too close to the blade. After ripping the molding at a quarter of an inch for the sides of the cabinet, 
I'll rip a few pieces at a half of an inch for the cabinet shelves. When I attach the molding, I'll attach it to the sides first and then the shelves. And a good trick for getting nice straight glue lines is use your finger as a guide and then just add a little pressure and go right down your workpiece. This glue bottle is from a company named Hood Finishing Products. A lot of people ask me about that. So I've got three quarter inch pin nails in my pin nailer here. Making sure I'm flush at the sides and attaching the molding. Now that I have the cabinet trimmed and sanded, I'll flip it over and take a measurement for the back. It looks like it's 26 and a half by 22 and a half. I'll put the good side facing in and test the fit. And that looks pretty good, but before I attach it, I'll give the back and the cabinet a coat of finish, and then I'll attach the back, screwing into the sides and the shelves. Okay, well, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. I think it's a great addition to the shop. It's gonna help keep me organized. Eventually, I will have all of my screws in these clear plastic containers. I'm really a big fan of these because if you drop the container, the screws don't spill out all over the place. It's really easy to open and close. If you do wanna build this, you can get the free drawing and cut list. It's on my website. You can just drag it onto your desktop and print it out or take a screenshot. You don't have to add your email or anything like that. Very fun, simple project and one that will help you organize your shop. Next week, I will be building this project. This is the first one. I'm building two of them. So it's kind of nice because I can figure things out on this one. It's got turned legs at the bottom, a little bit of a, a chamfer on the top here. It'll have a little molding up here, maybe some bead molding in the bottom. A fun project and definitely a good seasonal project. So if you're not subscribed, I hope that you'll hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and then you know when this project will be on YouTube. As always, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Before you start your next project, visit my website and check out my professional woodworking plans. The detailed instructions along with material lists and free video tutorials on YouTube will help you build a project that will last a lifetime.